All right. Um, I do listen to my viewers and I've been yelled at one too many times, so I <laughs> thought I'd come clean. Um, so uh, here are some filters and I'm going to see if I can't measure the uh, transmission, what we would call S21 parameter of the filters. And um, normally I just hook a uh, tracking generator to one side and a spectrum analyzer to the other side or hook it up on the VNA and sweep S21, do something like that. Um, but many, many times people have pointed out, hey, that filter you measured is probably not 50 ohm input impedance. And so by driving it with 50 ohms on the front and the back, you're really loading down the filter and it wasn't designed that way. Some filters are maybe designed for 500 ohms or 600 ohms and some filters may be designed for 1000 ohms. And if you drive them with 50 ohms, they droop and, and you get weird looking stuff. And so uh, sometimes you'll see uh, circuits where uh, there'll be a, um, a matching transformer um, where one side is, is 50 ohms and one side is 1,000 ohms, right? And you can put that on the output as well. Or you might see a circuit that looks like this. There might be a, um, uh, some type of matching network, just like you would have on, a, on an antenna. You would have a, a capacitor and an uh, a, uh, inductor, and it would be tuned for the frequency that this thing operates at, and it would be tuned to match 50 ohms into 1,000 ohms or whatever, right? Like a T network or something, L network. Um, so, um, obviously, you know, we, we could do these things, but it would be a lot, a lot of work, especially if you just want to quickly look at something on, on the uh, spectrum analyzer. So, um, I've done this in the past. I, I think you can find videos of me doing this in the past, but I don't do it very often. And that is to put a, uh, a series resistor. So this is kind of poor man's, uh, matching. So... Uh, if you have 50 ohms here, you just add more resistance and, and your 50 ohms goes up and up and up until it finally matches the, uh, uh, matches the impedance of the uh, uh, filter that you're trying to sweep. So this would be, uh, uh, you know, a uh, coax connector here and a uh, coax connector here. And all of the grounds are common and then you come in here and then... Uh, uh, somebody re recommended just uh, recently, uh, why don't you go ahead and, and just uh, make these variable resistors and you can, if you don't know the value, the, the uh, impedance value of the filter, a lot of times it's very, very hard to find data sheets for filters. You could quickly find the kind of the quickly move these uh, potentiometers until you, your, your waveform looks kind of better and uh, you can quickly figure out what maybe what the imp input impedance of the uh, of the filter is. Now, uh, lately, uh, <laughs> I built these little guys, which are just, which are just uh, uh, SMA connectors with some pigtails on them, and I just solder these onto the board, and then I have access to the filter or whatever, and I can and I can measure it. And so I thought, well, I have these little tools. Maybe I should make a little tool where I have a, a resistor in here, maybe a thousand ohm resistor in the two of them. I can solder them down. But but like this guy said maybe they should be variable. So I thought, okay, okay, okay. Um, let me see what I can come up with. So the little board that I built is uh, two connectors and a resistor. Uh, and it's, it's, this is the schematic of it. It's just uh, resistors in, uh, in series. And I have uh, basically, I have these two uh, pigtails and then I just have resistors in, in series with the red wire. And uh, I, I swept this filter out on another video. This is a 455 uh, kilohertz IF filter by Murata. And uh, when I measured it, um, <coughs> the filter looked something like this. It had some, it had some peaks in it. And uh, those peaks actually shouldn't be there. The, the filter should kind of look, kind of look like this, right? But you have these peaks here. And that's kind of why it was pointed out you're probably driving 50 ohms into a high impedance filter and that 50 ohms is kind of pulling it down and so you get you get the sagging between the uh, between the peaks here so let's see if that's really true uh, so I've connected my new my new fancy test setup where I have these little wheels uh, and uh, they are the same value they're 10k pot so I have a lot of room to move them around 
So I can set them uh, shorted basically. And so it's like, it's like the good old days uh, when I just had wires. So let's hook this up and see, uh, see if uh, it, it, it looks the way that it used to look. And then we'll twiddle the knobs and see if we can't get a, uh, can't get a better filter. All right, let's uh, hook up some cables to our filter. And all right, and then let's uh, come over here to our vector network analyzer. Uh, this is a 8712. And uh, I just booted it up and it remembered the last time I used it, I guess. And so uh, there we go. Um, let's see here. Let's do scale reference position. And yeah, you can see there that uh, we have these, these spikes on the, uh, on the filter. And uh, that's not very nice. Um, and so uh, let's go ahead and twiddle one of the uh, one of the resistors here. I'm, I'm, I'm changing one of the resistors and it certainly goes down in value because that's what we're adding resistance. So um, we're lowering the um, signal signal strength, right? We're adding resistance. And so it's the signal signal is going to go signal is going to go down. And as I I don't want to touch it because I also muck up its uh, RF characteristics by getting too close to it. And so, what can we say? Let me uh, let me change the scales here. Let's go to 10, 10 dB, and uh, there we go. And I'm going to turn this knob, and it goes down. Let's turn the other knob. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Um, so that looks more like a filter, right? Um, and if I twiddle the first knob, yeah, it goes back up again. So um, I'm turning the knob on the input. So this is, this is the input. So the input, I can kind of make it go up and down. And then the output, if I change the output, it really goes from, this is uh, 50 ohms. And this is some intermediate ohms. And then if I go way big in ohms, it gets worse again. So there is a sweet spot. So here's 50 and then something in the middle. And then here's 10K. That's 10K. So obviously 10K is not good and 50 is not good. But somewhere in the middle, kind of like right there is good. And then if I change the input, uh, that would be about the same value. That would be the value in and the value out. And I know it's the value in the value out because when I adjust the right hand um, potentiometer, it'll be say clock to two o'clock and I'll just change the input to two o'clock. So I know the two resistors are matching. And then we get a nice filter that looks like that. Now, uh, obviously we're dropping uh, value. So we're not actually measuring the, maybe the, the percent transmission of the filter, but we are measuring how, how it would react in its environment where the impedances were correct. And we would have a very nice, nice flat filter. It would look really, really good. Now, uh, we can scale this back up again. Uh, so there we go. Reference level. Let's bring it up here. All right. So a little bit fi finer tuning. Let's, uh, again, let's change that, that the output resistor. And we can see right about there. And then we'll change the input resistor. And, you know, it's probably about good right there. So they actually both, both give a good value right about at the same clocking. And so I claim this filter is probably that impedance. Okay. So now what we'll do is we'll take it off of this machine and we'll go measure those two resistors. And then we know what the, uh, with the impedances of those two. Um, so sure enough, thank you viewers. Um, 
like I said, I've had multiple people tell me, hey, you really should be measuring at the correct impedance. And then we would get this really, really nice looking, really, really nice looking filter. Now, this particular effect, I believe is one of the reasons that the Tiny SA clones are failing, that, that they don't do a good impedance match on the saw filter that's used in the, uh, in the Tiny SA. And they, they have a bad ripple or a bad frequency response or something on that saw filter. And, um, or the, uh, the, the transmission um, doesn't let enough signal through it because it's not impedance matched or something. I, th I, think, I think that's what's going on in those tiny SA clones, but I, I could be wrong. Um, anyway, yeah, let's go measure those resistors and see what, uh, uh, what the actual resistance is. I'm guessing it's probably around 500 ohms, but that's just a wild guess. We'll see what it is. All right, so uh, we have the filter back here, and uh, what we want to do is we want to measure from the input to the red wire and see how many ohms we get. So let's do it over here. I can clip onto that wire. And I can reach down and I can measure there. Oh, there we go. That's about 2K. Yeah, 1.9K. So there you go. So maybe it's uh, designed at, uh, you know, 1.8K, 1.9K, something like that. Um, and uh, like I said, I have both of the both of the knobs are are clocked about the same. Let's go ahead and measure this one just because we can. And it is measuring two and a half kilohertz. So so let's say two two kilohertz is uh, uh, two two kilo ohms is the is the design frequency of this uh, of this filter. So if you were designing the circuit you would make sure that uh, your use of the filter had the input impedance and the output impedance matching around 2K, right? And so you would either have to do uh, this type of transformer thing, which I see quite often, or this type of thing, which I see quite often. So uh, yeah, uh, whatever you're comfortable with or whatever works, I guess. I'm not an RF designer, so I don't know which one is better and why you would use one over the other, but I do know that you need to be at 2K and not 50 ohms.